everyone. Today I'm excited to paint a portrait of the spectacular India Moore from Pose, one of the most groundbreaking and visually interesting shows on TV right now. This is a tough painting with a lot of sparkling and colorful things happening, and before I began painting I spent an hour and a half drawing and applying masking fluid to every highlight and out of the ordinary color I wanted to isolate. I have never used this much masking fluid on a painting before. India is non-binary and prefers they, them pronouns. I'm going to paint their face first with three main colors, yellow ochre, turquoise, and a pinkish orange, which is a wild palette to use. The lighting in the reference photo, which is a promo picture from FX, uh, comes directly from overhead and is bright white. And I don't know how it's happening, like maybe it's a filter, but the shadows have this gorgeous blue cast that I'm really going to exploit here because I love turquoise. But first, let's paint that beautiful face. So as you saw, I put clear water down first, and then I added the three colors I mixed, along with some deeper purples and oranges now. Now that the skin is mostly dry, I'm going to spend some time skipping around from feature to feature, giving each one a chance to dry while I work on the others. The glitter and underlying color on these lips is really challenging and cool to paint. You've got a sort of iridescent pink that is also picking up some of the turquoise light, and then there's the problem of how to paint glitter. To create the illusion of glitter without actually gluing it onto the paper myself, I've put tiny dots of masking fluid down to keep the brightest parts white. Then I painted the main lip color and the line between the lips. That orange shadow under the bottom lip helps to define its shape too. Later on I'll dot on darker colors where I see them and that's basically how you do it. The eyelids are also glittery but it's a silvery blue. A couple of years ago I made a video showing you how I paint silver things, and I'm doing a lot of the same things here. You need at least three values, white, a mid-tone, and a dark to make anything look three-dimensional, and in this case, a bluish metallic as well. Just painting these eyelids with a coat of solid silver metallic paint would not make them look silver. You really need some white and some dark colors. The face is really starting to come together now that the eyes are mostly there. I still have some fine tuning to do, and when I looked at my work at this point it seemed kind of rough, but it's always a relief to hit that point where I can see my person peeking out at me. And I've got to say, only the truly beautiful can be photographed from an up-the-nose perspective like this and still look great. Moving on, I've got an arm to paint. As with India's face, I'm putting clear water down first and then I'm dropping in that same yellow ochre, turquoise, and orange combination. You can see the places where future confetti will go now. So that was fun and I'll let that calm down while I add details to the perimeter of India's face. Their hair, which is a gorgeous natural texture that I love to paint, is making some forehead shadows here and there and I'm painting them before I work on the hair. While I'm at it, I'm adding a few fingers, skipping one because I didn't want it to run into the other ones, and I'm saving the fingernails for last. I just removed the masking fluid from those eyelashes, and next I'll go in there with a grayish purple and some darker colors to refine them. Then I've got some other picky things to do here and there around the face, and the glittery lip gloss will get some more attention. I'm adding more intense pinks and blues where I see them, Putting a dot of darker color next to a white spot will make the white spot seem even brighter, and that's another glitter painting tip for you. At this point, I am loving this painting, and I'm seriously having a blast with it. The last thing I painted that day was the other forearm and part of the hand. I found a natural stopping place along their knuckles, and I'm mostly using the same colors as before. I'll lay in some deeper colors along the right side, and the turquoise does a good job defining the muscles in those toned arms. This is a white dress with silver elements, but the cool light makes it look blue. If you've ever watched my videos before, you're probably familiar with my old messed up fuzzy brush, whose bristles were born to create hair like this. I'm sort of dotting just a bit of yellowish brown paint wherever I see it in India's hair. 
This is the hair's lighter mid-tone. The highlights line the outer perimeter like a white halo, followed by that gold color. Then closer to their face and body, the hair shifts to a very dark purplish brown. I'll let that dry and move on to the fingers, whose color is very interesting with blocks of bright turquoise. And another fun part is glazing more turquoise where I see it on the arms. Deep orange and purple can be found in the shadows where that blue light is not hitting them. And at this point my cat Pooj came by to check on my work. If she hops up on my desk when my painting is wet, I steer her away from it, but at the moment this is dry, and as I've said before, if I've painted you, at some time or another, my cat has sat on you, or walked on you. Next I'm going to deepen the hand shadows and darken up some random spots, and after that I'll fill in some of the darkest shadows around their hair and hands. This will be a mixture of sepia, which is a dark brown, and purple. And the shadows go on the arms too. More arm definition is coming up, and I really liked using an intense orange here and there. The orange and turquoise are complementary colors, so they play off each other in a way that is pleasing to the eye. I'm just really crazy about the warm and cool colors going on in this picture. I've pumped them up quite a bit from the original, but that's what I always do. Time to fill in the shadows on the right side and then between the fingers to define them. And finally, I'm going to take that dark color around the hairline. And India is coming to life. The last thing I painted on that second day was the background, which is a combination of the same dark purple along with turquoise and orange. I'm putting them on all at the same time and letting them blend together however they like. My goal was to create a sort of cosmic background, and you can see the future confetti and her icicle crown starting to happen. This will take about an hour to dry. The next day I worked for about an hour pulling this painting together with a lot of little details and I'll be skipping around a lot. I was really concerned with getting the hands right and I also have a lot to do with the arms and hair. I'm painting as quickly as I can. Sometimes paintings this size can take me a few weeks to complete. With this video all I had was a few hours and obviously it's been sped way up. Sometimes it's 20 times faster and sometimes it's 40. Right now it's 40, so every second I'm painting here equals 40 real life seconds. And now it's time to integrate the darkest parts of the hair with those golden parts. And again, I'm using my fuzzy brush and a sort of reddish brown color to create this transition. Along the right side, I'm making a few more defined curls, which is really fun to do against that white veil. Here's a majorly fun part. I'm removing the masking fluid with my rubber cement pickup, revealing the white paper that's been hiding beneath all those rubbery blobs. It looks like it's snowing, or maybe those are stars. And now it's fingernail time. I've mixed my hottest pink and my hottest orange to make what I call my nuclear red, and that goes on the lower half of the fingernails. The parts that extend beyond India's fingertips are harshly lit and show up as mostly white with a little light pink in spots. Now I can really tighten up the hands, concentrating on softening the edges where the masking fluid was. The icicles will get just a little bit of light blue and purple in their shadowy areas, but I'm going to keep them mostly white. Then I'll mix my turquoise with just a bit of green and paint the confetti, keeping some of it plain white. This is the painting equivalent of putting sprinkles on a cupcake, and I about lost my mind loving it. And I love Pose. It focuses on gay and transgender performers in New York City's 1980s ballroom scene, and Pose has made history with the most trans series regulars ever in an American scripted TV show. India's character Angel has just one of the show's many storylines, both unique and universal, that resonate with a population who has waited too long to see themselves represented on television. It's wonderful and 100% worth your time. And here's my finished painting. Thanks a lot for watching.